Salam sejahtera and a good day. Today, we shall be talking about the first topic in re research process, which is actually the key steps or elements in the research process itself. Well, all research starts off from general ideas. And where did you get the general ideas from? Well, by reading through literature review, discussions, observations, or of course, in fact, it can be even be a requirement for your postgraduate study. And that's why you are attending this class today. Whatever it is, these general ideas should lead you to establish a research focus, another key milestone in order for you to generate a meaningful research topic. And a research focus will actually allow you to identify subject matter to be investigated, identify objectives of the research, and of course, the factors and measurable variables associated with that particular research idea. This will then allow you to characterize variables. Characterization of variables is actually an important step because it allows you to explain how variables are interrelated and explain each other, and therefore allowing us to justify the inclusion of certain factors and variables. And variables can be both parametric, meaning that they follow normal distribution, or non-parametric in nature, meaning that they do not follow any particular distribution uh, format in nature. And from that point onwards, it allows you to determine the experimental design and the appropriate research methodology. And this will actually allow us to have a deep think, deep dive on the viable sample size. And the viable sample size can only be, can only be derived by having a thorough understanding of the research topic. And of course, this requires all students to have a proper understanding of sampling theories. And commonly used methods in a particular field will be a very good starting point to determine sample size. Otherwise, we can always bank on effect size and test powers by using a series of formulas, softwares, and sample size charts, which, shall, which we shall cover in this series of lecture. By having a sample size, this will actually allow us to theorize what will happen in our experiment. Well, this actually is a process whereby we formulate a hypothesis. A hypothesis is actually what you are going to expect from your trial or trials. And in order to run their trials, we need to organize resources and make a faithful decision whether we're going to run a pilot trial or there's actually no need to, to, for us to run a pilot trial at all and embarking on the actual experiment. Experiment aim to collect data and there's always and never enough data. And it is important for us to make sure that all data is clearly labeled and traceable. And after collecting data, it is also always important for us to ensure that the data itself is being screened, particularly for errors. And this actually involves another key steps, which we shall discuss in lecture four, which is data screening and cleaning. Because if you include errors, then you are going to generate garbage results that you have a hard time deciphering. And once you have cleaned out the data, then and only then the data is fit for analysis and interpretation. Interpretation is actually a very crucial step that will form an important milestone for your research. And therefore, it should be handled with care and in a systematic manner. I would typically encourage my students to write and report the results in a sequential and in a stepwise manner. It is always important not to be too presumptuous, and it is always a good practice for us to stick to the approach whereby you have one interpretation will be equivalent to one fact or one point, and do not overreach. By having one result resulting in one interpretation leading to one point or one fact, it will actually allow us to systematically discuss and talk about our findings. This particular chart here will actually provide a general 
outline on how we can actually write results and the commentary from uh, the findings that we have in our experiments so far. In order to write a discussion, it is always important for us to pay attention to the topics at hand. As what we mentioned earlier, one results derived from one method, derived from one analysis, and therefore they should be commented in the first place. So commentary should take into account the trends and outstanding individual results. And by having that, the next step will be to comment based on historical review, who are the other prior studies, authors in the prior studies that actually agreed or produced similar results or are the current results reproducing a prior observed trends. And this is actually where you need to come up with a statement of agreement. This statement of agreement should be followed by a series of statements, quoting references, explaining the reasons for the agreement, and it should be technical in nature. And of course, being a research report, it is always important for us to consider unbiased view by including statement of disagreement or statement of discord, discordance or any other statement that would dispute or potentially dispute your current findings. It is important to consider that point because it will then allow us to have an unbiased view of the research topic itself. This is then followed by a statement explaining the reasons for disagreement. And by having this statement of disagreement, when viewed alongside the statement explaining reasons for agreement, we can then conclude why after cross-examining these statements, we are convinced that the current results are valid. So if you follow these four steps, you will then be able to construct a very specific and appointed review of a results of a result or results that we have just analyzed statistically and that will actually present you with a very organized points for which you can then elect to mix and match or merge with other subsequent points from any other subsequent analysis. If you can take this approach and generate maybe one or two sentences from each and every steps, you can quickly find out that you may have up to eight sentences along with the individual quotations. This is actually a very efficient way for us to generate results, commentary, and their discussions from uh, findings that you have managed to gather, gather from your experiments so far. The next question that you may be asking will be how extensive should the study be? Depending on what type of degree that you are studying for, if you are only focusing on observed events, minimal explanation of mechanisms and processes involved, most probably you are doing a bachelor's level dissertation. A dissertation that details how and what happened with some explanation of mechanisms or processes involved whereby we can just simply term that these are actually horizontal studies is typically suitable for a master's dissertation. And delving deeper, if you are writing a PhD dissertation, there should be more emphasis on the why aspect. Therefore, apart from describing observation, we need to detail why, how, and what happened. And the focus here will be on mechanism and processes involved. This will then determine how much material that we're going to include in our report, how in-depth are we going to be in terms of our discussion, and especially so if you are focusing on vertical studies. This is important to ensure that you are submitting a material that is appropriate for the degree that you are being, you are, you are, so, you are, you are sorting after. The following schedule depicts the typical activities for postgraduate studies at UPM. As what I'm going to explain in real-person classes, 
Some of the materials included in the current notes are actually best discussed in an interactive manner rather than through uh, this uh, one-way delivery through a YouTube channel. So I shall be talking about more about this array of activities in in-person classes when we meet later. As you can see here, this postgraduate uh, typical activities for postgraduate studies at UPM is very much differs according to what you are expected to do by a supervisory committee, your field of studies, the nature of project, but in essence, it is important for you to make sure that you gain all the necessary approvals, particularly if you're running animal trials, uh, to ensure that you have your IACUC approval done within first semester. It is also important for you to ensure that you have a working supervisory committee within the first semester itself. And the most important component that you need to make sure that you have already achieved within the first semester, in my own opinion, will be the thesis frame. The thesis frame is actually a very important document that will actually communicate your intent and perhaps even the calendar of studies to your supervisory committee. And this is actually important to ensure that you can actually graduate on time. The subsequent semesters are very much dependent on what you have already planned in the first semester. So I shall be explaining more about this when we meet later in in-person classes. A sample thesis frame is actually being depicted on the screen here. This thesis frame, if you can see, is actually can be easily converted into the table of content of your thesis. Because at this stage, at this initial stage, you are actually planning for what type of materials they're going to include in your thesis. And in order to do that, it is important that you have a clear communication with the intent and what your supervisory committee wanted you to do. So first, you need to come up with keywords that will not only form the title of your thesis, but of course, will be the basis of the key topics within your literature review. At this stage, your literature review is something of importance that you need to pay attention to. With these keywords, at this stage, not really organized in any other um, sequential manner because it's still open for discussion, it is important for you to determine which are the keywords that is going to be given the most weightage and therefore the most amount of pages or materials that you need to cover. I'm sure you had the experience whereby you go to the library or maybe you do literature search with the intent of finding materials for your study, only to end up not only uh, not, not finding materials of your interest, but also found out that you may have been distracted along the way. So this literature review, um, uh, thesis frame meant, for on, meant not only for literature review is something that will actually hold you and ensure that you follow the path that you already plan. As you can see there, not only that you are planning for keywords, you are also planning for how much materials that you're going to include based on the weightage of this material and the feedback from a supervisory committee. And if you can include a calendar next to the number of pages, so you can see that you can immediately have a calendar in this case. And of course, at this early stage in, in semester one or semester two, you may not have much detail about the general methodology, the type of experiments they're going to be performing, and of course, the contents of general discussion and uh, inkling, any inkling about general conclusion. This is where we shall be talking about in subsequent slides. And of course, at the later stages, you, if you are preparing for a timely graduation, it is important for you to work backwards based on your intended dates of graduation because prior to that, a series of processes should be in place. For example, there should be a notice of thesis submission and in order for notice of thesis submission, please inquire with your each uh, at the uh, office of the Deputy Dean of Postgraduate Studies on the requirement to submit the notice of thesis submission at your own faculty because different faculties, different um, uh, PTJs, institutes may have different requirements allowing students to submit their notice of thesis submission when they have fulfilled those, kind of, those requirements. And of course, 
you may also want to look at uh, for master student you may also want to look at conversion studies and this is actually where it is also important for you to communicate clearly to the supervisory committee and of course on the requirement procedural requirements by communicating with your deputy dean of the postgraduate studies office whatever it is if you are thinking about conversion, if you are thinking about graduation, it is always important for you to have some degree of manuscript preparation at hand. Manuscript preparation is actually something that you should be actively pursuing because not only that it helps in planning your work, not only that it contributes critically to the conclusion of your thesis, but it can also serve a whole series of purpose if you are going for conversion from master's to PhD, and at the same time, if you are expecting an easier viva voce or def thesis defense at the point uh, of graduation later. This is actually a slide detailing the key differences between chapter discussion and general discussion. I shall be explaining more based on the live examples or the feedbacks provided, provided by the students because each, stu each student, each topic, and of course the composition of students that I'm getting from each of the classes per, per, for, for, for each of the academic year will be different. But in short, when you, are talk when you are talking about discussion or generating discussion, it is always important for us to talk about what has been observed in your experiments, as a result of your experimental intervention, what have you introduced to intervene? It can be any other kind of treatment. And what can you conclude when you're uh, uh, based on the outcome of the experiments after your intervention? And based on that, you may need to deduce what kind of mechanisms that involve leading you to have that kind of observation and conclusion. So these are all crucial steps that you need to take a good look if you are writing a general discussion. Bear in mind, I've already highlighted the four key steps on how to write discussion. And this is actually a summary point where you can actually use to generate general discussion based on a series of collected topics or experiments that